Hey guys, this is the Hope Factory, and I have brought the incredible Reverend Thurston here uh, to come and discuss with me on what is the church. And so I have titled this Sermon Prep. Reverend Thurston, how are you? Man, I'm great. Good to see you, John. <laughs> fantastic, fantastic. I love your outfit. I love, I love you, how man. you're dressed today. <laughs> <laughs> you came ready. Hope Factory ready exactly. to be with us. <laughs> Got to stay youthful. Got to keep it fresh. Yes, yes. A little, a little drip. That's what. A little right. drip, drip. <laughs> Drip is the new one. <laughs> I want to hear it in the next sermon. You got it. <laughs> Reverend Thurston is phenomenal. I mean, you, you, you are a phenomenal uh, preacher. Thanks, sir. Who incorporates the contemporary context yeah. for the young people. That's just what's going on around you uh, into the text. And so it's, I wanted to have this beautiful conversation on sure. what is a church? Because it's been this huge dialogue. I mean, it's COVID. We can't meet in the church anymore. Right. And so what actually is the church uh why are you still in the church <laughs> another thing too is you growing up in church yeah and so I, I, at some point i want to get into your own journey of still being in the church sure and why you're still here cool. uh, as a pastor's kid i don't know if you guys know well maybe you do because you talk about us all the time but a lot of pastors kids struggle with staying in church yeah um and then of course we want to talk about the future of the church man what, what is the future what can we imagine or what should we be foreseeing coming on the horizon all right um so the, so the first one is what is the church so i see the church as a collective community of believers it's not relegated to a building but believers that share faith and they function as the hands and the feet of Jesus. I've never seen the church being limited or confined to a building. Mm -hmm. uh, we have opportunity every day to meet people, to engage people that would never step foot in the building. So is your life representing love, care, compassion, concern? Then you're representing the church. Are you meeting the needs of people that you come in contact with? If so, you're representing the church. You're representing Christ. Okay, representation, love, care, concern. Yeah. That's good practically. But then the Bible says that where two or three come together or where people meet together and assemble. Sure. And then you got these preachers who are on TV talking about that they can't meet at church. Right, right. So they're about to go storm Washington, D.C. Yes, sir. Uh, along with the crazy uh, guys with their guns <laughs> and figure out how to meet in church again. You don't have to speak deeply into all that. I just want you to answer back to yeah. that. So I think that when we consider those biblical texts that talk about gathering together, considering cultural context, mm -hmm. we misread the Bible so often through our Western lens. The Bible was not written from a Western perspective. Those characters in the Bible did not live in the West. They did not live in America. Right. That was first century. We're in the 21st century. Absolutely. A lot of stuff has shifted. A lot of stuff has changed. The original church were they met in homes people gathered together in homes and then in some cities they would have like a, a collection of those home churches that would gather together and connect and do community they met on an infrequent basis yes but they still went out and did the work that was associated with the faith to represent christ to build people's lives so it's cool for us to gather together. We're relational. Yeah. God created us to be relational beings. So yes, there's benefit in us gathering together. But as younger people, we've learned how to build community outside of the four walls. Yes. This is new to baby boomers and older, or maybe they're finally pulling their head out of the sand. But we've been building community through social media platforms. And like we like know each other. We have a rapport and relationship. Does it look like what it looks like when people come together? No. But there's still some level of sufficiency to the relationships that we've been able to build. There's a level of intimacy, but you can't have true intimacy until you come from online to offline to connect. So I think that this season is setting us up to see what the future, and I know we're gonna get to that, mm -hmm. to what the future looks like. And again, for those who are older, they don't get it, but younger people get it. We know how to build community without gathering together in a physical space. So can a 16 year old have church at McDonald's? Yes. If it wasn't COVID. Can a 16 year old have church at school? Yes. Uh, can a 16 year old have church at their house? Yes. Or at uh, after football practice? Yes. So oh. I, I live partly in Atlanta. I'm still back and forth, mainly in Chicago, but still in Atlanta. There's a community that I'm connected with called the Faith Community. Uh, one of my buddies planted a church a few years ago. I'm actually like the chairman of the board mm -hmm. for the church in that context. Mm -hmm. And guess where we have church on a regular basis? at a cigar bar. Yeah. Okay. The second Tuesday out of every month, yes. we meet 
or before COVID, yeah. we would meet at a cigar bar. Yeah. So people were having their drinks, smoking cigars, talking theology, uh -huh. having church, and then we were playing activities where we would go out and serve the community. That was church for us. We that, didn't meet that's in the place wild that, That's wild that you would even say that, Stephen, and I'm, we're gonna edit that part out because Jesus never hung out in places outside of the synagogue, and he definitely <laughs> didn't turn water into wine, and he definitely wasn't known for being in such unsacred places. Right. He, he didn't hang with publicans and sinners. Look, man, I picked places that were sanitized on purpose <laughs> for our younger audience. Um, why is it then, because I've seen you preach in some some in front of some pretty big crowds. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Why is it then that people feel like church is more real when it's a large crowd and it's a preacher with preacher garb on? Sure. Because <laughs> in that setting, they don't have to do any work. In the traditional church setting, they're relying upon the preacher mm -hmm. to pray my prayer, to preach my sermon, to, to have this connection, this dialogue with God. And it takes accountability off the people because they can come and get it. It's a consumer perspective. Mm -hmm. When people are forced to kind of do it on their own, a lot of people are struggling now because they've not built that personal relationship with God. So they don't know how to have church. So what we do on Sunday morning, that really ought to be the overflow. We ought to be having church all week long in the privacy of our homes, our cars, our cubicles, wherever we connect with God. I connect with God. Y'all know I ride horses. I connect with God in a major way when I'm out at the stable with my horse riding through the pastures or through the mountains in Georgia. I'm having church on a regular basis. Okay, Paul, I just was checking my social media and my friend who refused to go to church because the church hurt, said that she is never going to church again. Okay? Okay. What is our work and our responsibility? If we say that we're believers in Christ, yeah. which I, I see a disconnection. How can you believe in Christ and then not be a part of Christ's body? Sure. How can we take church out of that context where she got church hurt from? Yes. Because you just said church is a place where Christ is represented, where love is, yeah. where grace is, where the people got acting in integrity and love one another. How to differentiate, did I say the word right? Yeah, yeah, you do, do the difference between what church is that she went through where she got hurt sure. and where church is where it should be outside of our normal conception sure. of what it is. If I could have a one-on-one -on -one conversation with her, I would remind her that the people that hurt her were the people mm. um, that were in that church, in that collective community, um, mm. and people have their stuff. All of us bring our baggage, our issues, our stuff that we're trying to work out. The church should be the place where we're worked out. So I don't put clean clothes in a washing machine. Mm. I put dirty clothes so that they can reach the place of cleanliness. Mm. The church is similar to a washing machine. We bring our dirty selves to this place or whatever whatever the place looks like yeah. to connect with God for God to do some washing some of us are more dirtier is dirtier a word I don't know yeah, yeah. some of us are more dirtier <laughs> here it is yeah, <laughs> than other people yes. are and so there has to be that level of grace where I get it you were crazy you were having an off day so you came at me funny and funky and so that offended me and now I don't want to have to, anything to do with you mm -hmm. but it's incumbent upon somebody else from that collective community to see that she's missing Number one, we acknowledge she's missing. Yeah. Somebody then reaches out, hey, haven't seen you, haven't connected with you in a while. What's happening in your life? Mm -hmm. And we then seek to meet her needs because what she experienced in that place called church, it was probably an issue of a trigger being triggered by something someone said or did mm -hmm. that relates to something that happened in childhood, happened in that family dynamic. And that's what the real issue is. It has to be a root cause analysis that's done. What's your real problem? Because mm -hmm. somebody saying something funky to you in this place, this ain't the first time that's happened in your life. Right. So what was it? What's going on in your life? Where do you need to be healed? And where can I work with you and even tell my story? Yeah. Share my testimony so I, so you can possibly see we've had similar lives, similar experiences. Yeah. And I was able to overcome. And yeah. let me now pass this on to you so that you can overcome yeah. and we can continue to grow and build life together. Yeah, as a survivor of church, yeah, as someone who has overcame and seen everything, <laughs> seen like everything, good, bad, ugly, <laughs> good, bad, the heights of it, the lowest of human error, the darkest spaces, a pastor's kid who was behind doors, in front of doors, <laughs> yeah, uh, man. too much expected of you. You survived what was traditional church, yep. and you also have been a participant of creating church. You took personal responsibility, yeah. and you've had church not just in church buildings, but you've had church you just expressed in many different places. Sure. 
what is something, one of the most, I, I'll say this, one of the most incredible places I've ever seen church happening was in a youth group. I was down in Texas, San Antonio, and they would meet on Friday nights, and they used to bring their clubs, their Christian clubs from their high schools yeah. and meet. Okay. They had over 700 teenagers meeting on Friday nights with their Christian clubs because they had church during the week at school, then they'll bring their cool group yeah. and have fun there. But they were kids. As you get older, you have to operate in this world where you have to start designing it, you know, for sure. yourself. Yes. How can you encourage them in the future, uh, those kids and us or whoever is listening uh, to this video on church in the future to keep the integrity of you said the love, the grace, the representation of Christ, loving on one another, holding each other uh, accountable. Sure. How can they keep that going into the future with the dynamics that we see coming? Man, COVID is here. Yeah. Technology is huge now. Some people think, uh, you know, just sitting at home is all that church should be uh, watching someone on TV. Right. What, how do we navigate that? And what encouraging words can you say to sure. them moving into that? So I, I was able to stick and stay with church in spite of what I've seen mm -hmm. and some stuff I've even experienced personally because I it was about a mindset for me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So here's how I was able to be kind of successful in my even in my pastoral career. I saw what I didn't like about church and yes. I came into That's church good. when I had a position of power and influence to be sensitive to those things and make those necessary changes. Yes. When I was like six, I remember going to the dentist and the assistant took me to the back you know, to do my x-rays and as I'm sitting in the x-ray chair, he said, Steve, what do you hate about coming to the dentist's office? Mm -hmm. He's like, this is not a trick question, you're not gonna get in trouble, tell me. I ran down the list of all of those things that I hated about coming to the dentist's office. Mm -hmm. The next visit, as we were going back for my cleaning, he said, you remember you gave me that long list of things? Yes. Have you noticed something? And I said, what do you mean? He said, everything that you said, I took note of and we sought to make those changes. That's we good. valued you as a customer. Yes. Customer service, customer yes. care. And so we made those changes so you will feel more comfortable and more excited about coming to the dentist's office. That's always stuck with me. Yeah. And I took that same mindset into the church. So anytime I hear people that don't come to church, don't like church. Yeah. Hey, why don't you like church? Why do you hate church? And I pay attention to that and I try to come back into my environment and make the shift and make the change. Yeah. Some change can only be made from the inside. Do I get pushed back? Do I have people that think I'm crazy, don't like what I say, try to shut me down? Yep, but I keep fighting because people's lives are at stake. Yes. Your eternity is at stake. You know, where you gonna spend eternity? That's at stake. Yes. It's important enough to me to fight the good fight, to speak truth to power, even if it gets me in trouble, even if it gets me fired, I don't care. I wanna make the needful and the necessary changes. Yeah. The church of the future is gonna look different, yeah. but it's gonna look like what I think the church ought to have been looking like for a long time. COVID has positioned the church to go outside. So much of church is insular, mm -hmm. not necessarily Salem because we've got a long track record of reaching the community, but yeah. many churches don't have that story. They don't have that testimony. Yeah. And so everything is inward focus, us. What can we do for us? What can we provide for our people? This pushes us to be the hands and the feet of Jesus in the community. We should always be looking for a need that we can fulfill, a need that we can meet. I saw on Facebook the other day, one of my friends announced, hey, I just got terminated in the midst of COVID. Yes. I immediately reached out to her and said, hey, what bill do you have that I can pay until yeah. you find another job? I want yeah. to supply that need. Absolutely. Is it going to be a sacrifice for me? Yes. I don't know how much the bill is going to be, right. but that's what we ought to do as a collective community, yes. the body of Christ, find a need and fill it. Yes. And so that social media platform was a benefit. I would not have known she lost her job if she had not posted it because we don't talk on a consistent basis. Mm -hmm. So we always ought to be looking for avenues and opportunities to be a blessing. What would Jesus do? That's good. Like we would throw that stuff out there, but that's real, especially right now. Yes. The church of the future looks like us serving people, meeting the needs of people, recognizing that everybody is our neighbor. Yes. Not just who looks like us, who has the same skin tone as us, who votes like us, yes. who lives in the same community as us. Everybody is our neighbor. So let's reach out. Let's touch. Yes. Let's agree. Yes. Let's make things happen to benefit and bless people's lives. How about this? You look at that camera and you make a plea to who's ever watching this because our hope is that this goes out not just to our ministry and church here, but sure. goes out to people who are de church hate church, yeah. been hurt in church, maybe never stepped foot in church too. Yeah. Uh, going out to people who are unfamiliar with church, make a plea of them to come into church and come into the body of Christ. Sure. God created you 
for purpose, on purpose, and with a purpose. And it doesn't matter that you've never accepted Christ as your Lord and Savior. It doesn't matter that you don't know the church jargon and the Jesus re re rhetoric and mm -hmm. all of that stuff. It's all good. There's a design in and on your life mm -hmm. and you've got to utilize it. You've got to engage it. And you may do it even without claiming I'm a Christian. Ooh, I know that touched somebody mm -hmm. who's churchy in a real funky kind of way. But listen, we're trying to grow people. Everybody grows at a different stage and at a different speed. Go out and reach out. Touch upon the tenets that Christ teach, love, care, compassion, concern. Jesus hung out with the grimiest people, the dirtiest people. That's who Jesus actually kicked it with. He wasn't with churchy people. So your friends that are doing all kind of stuff, show love, show care, show compassion, no judgment. It's a judgment free zone. Reach them and touch them. You're then walking in the light of Christ. You're doing what God has actually created you to do. And hey, maybe that gift, that talent, that ability could even be used at a greater degree if you would connect with a community called a church. Give us a try. Just check us out. You don't have to go full-fledged in. Just connect with somebody that you can relate to, uh, some preacher, some ministry that speaks your language, that you can vibe with, that's doing the kind of work in the community that you're passionate about. Just volunteer. Give them a taste test. Give them a try. And hey, who knows what your life may turn out to be. You may find yourself saying, what must I do to be saved? What yeah. must I do to, to claim Christ as my Lord and Savior? You may start sensing a shift in your vibe, in your swag, in your thought process. Mm. That's the Spirit of God speaking to you, changing you, converting you, convincing you, and even convicting you. Don't fight it. God's trying to do something with you. He's trying to take you to another level of life. Yeah, I got my iPad here. I'm ready. Uh, I'm, we call this sermon prep, so I'm going to go ahead and take some notes uh, as Reverend Thurston answers one last question for me, sure. which is talk to my people. Talk to me <laughs> about what is churchy and what is church, real church, sure. so I can implement that into my yeah, life. That's a, I mean, that's an amazing question. <laughs> I think so many people of all ages struggle with what that is. So church ain't no makeup, uh, no, no hoop earrings. <laughs> dress down to your ankles, uh, wear white, all of that stuff. That ain't got nothing to do with holiness. It ain't got nothing to do with church. Mm -hmm. uh, what's really church is following Christ and the model that Christ set. I said it before, I said it last year when we did Youth Day, that if it was up to me, if I had my, my withers about things, mm -hmm. I would probably take the biblical text, the canon, the 66 books, and I would like chop out and carve out everything that's in red and just try to live that. Mm -hmm. uh, and follow the model and the words of Christ mm -hmm. uh, because of course there, there are other elements that go with the rest of the canon, mm -hmm. the rest of those scriptures. So love, that is the foundation of the ministry of Jesus Christ. Love in everything that Christ did, it was about love, it was about care, it was about compassion. That's what being the church is all about. Showing love, showing care, showing compassion, meeting the needs of people. Mm -hmm meeting their human needs even before you speak to their spiritual needs. I can't yes. hear a sermon if I'm hungry. That's good. I can't hear a sermon if I don't know where I'm going to lay my head at night. Yeah. And so meeting those basic needs of people and then walking along with them through the balance of their life mm -hmm. to grow them, to develop them. That's what church and being the church is really all about. Reverend Thurston, I want to thank you, man. This thank has you, been John. great. I'm going to use this in my sermon, <laughs> the message I'm going to do next, but uh, continue to keep uh, revolutionizing and doing all that God has called you to be. And I'm so glad you stopped here with us to have a dis sure. this discussion. Cool. And you keep doing what you're doing. You're doing an amazing job. Thank, Thank you, you, sir. Thank you.